Okay, before I proceed to the uh, to uh, show you and share with you how can we uh, calculate the uh, surface integral uh, by using the given information. So you might wonder how can we have this particular formula. It looks like uh, the form here is the same as you done in line integral but for that you are uh, using the at length isn't it but now uh, now we, we don't we don't have uh, the at length anymore because we deal now with uh, the with the surface the uh, now we have a capital s here means the surface the previous one in line integral we have a uh, small s that one is representing the the length the at length okay but this one nothing to do with the at length maybe it is good for me to uh, explain to you but not so in um, in a, not so briefly but at least you can get some idea how can we have we use this okay um so the idea is actually uh we uh we we assume that um uh okay now now is using the formula in general we have the we have the uh, density function the function given uh, ds over the uh, surface sigma so now in order for us to calculate this using a standard calculation where you can uh, convert this into f x and y uh, da okay uh, now for this particular case you have a region your region is on xy plane so it is not directly converted into this you have to provide some calculation in order for you to get this which means that you have to uh, use the formula of um, and so uh, so the now now you have you have to use the information provided about the surface to look like it is nothing to do with the the f here so don't be confused because actually sometimes you are using the same notation but this is not the 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 thing that you have to use in finding the ds into da is whatever information provided uh, on the surface so let's say you have uh, the function in terms of xy okay but this is not the same as this one this is density so i i should use uh, maybe um, Maybe this one, I put the density function, okay? So, uh, for this, we, we, we can find the fx. We have to them, you have to differentiate f respect to x squared, respect to y squared, plus 1, d. But how can we get this? Okay, so, uh, the idea is uh, coming from, okay, so, uh, is, uh, we are finding the vector function of the surface itself. Remember uh, in the previous lesson, I told you that if your uh, graph is a surface, so your uh, vector function is in terms of x, y, z. So, uh, in this case, to obtain the vector function are in terms of x, y, z. Okay. So, now you 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 obtain the the vector function of the given surface so you are given a surface so now you you can see that x is x y is y and z is depending on the uh, function f so here i should put the f in terms of x y okay so meaning that um, your vector function is only in terms of x y z because your your z is uh, now in terms of x and y. So let's say you have a cone. So your your uh, component z is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. So the expression that you have in the vector function is only x, y and only x and y. Okay. So now uh, that is the vector function of the surface. So now we when we look at the... Uh, okay, so let's say your surface is given by in blue. 
So that is your surface. But now we deal with the, the tangent, the what we call that uh, a tangent of the surface or tangent plane. So the tangent plane, you can find the uh, we we relate this with the tangent uh the, the tangent vector. Okay, so uh what is the tangent vector? So if your vector function is r, so your tangent vector uh, it's just like a directional derivative that you remember that. So uh, you, you can uh, assume that your uh, differentiation of the r, your tangent 9 is along the x-axis and along the y-axis. So uh, for the tangent line, so now we look at the, the tangent line. Uh, we, we, when we're talking about the tangent line, uh, or the tangent vector, sorry. So the tangent vector in this is because, because we deal with the surface, so we, we call it as a tangent plane. So the, the, the curve here, it is a flat, so that is called a tangent plane. So for the tangent plane along the x-axis, so we call that as, um, uh, um, we differentiate our respect to x. So we have our x, so it is a vector. So uh, what is then, what is the uh, tangent, tangent vector for the r that you have? So you have to differentiate x with respect to x, we give you one, and this one zero, and this one we be uh, because we know this one uh, this one is z so f x y is z so now you want to differentiate z with respect to x so you have del z del x right okay now we want to obtain the vector the uh, the tangent vector along the x axis so we put the r uh, the vector r we differentiate r respect to y so what we can have here is differentiate this one respect to y so 0 1 and this one becomes this is actually z so we differentiate z respect to y okay so as we know that uh, now we are talking about the um the normal vector to the surface so uh this one is your this one is your um uh Okay, let's say I I have a um whatever surface, right? And then um let's say my point is over here. So now uh, uh, normal to the surface is what is the normal to the surface? So normal to the surface is this is normal, or we can have the capital N because for the small n. This one representing the unit normal. But now, uh, when we put the capital N, so this one just a, a normal to the surface. But small n, meaning that using the normal normal vector that you obtain, you have to find the unit vector for that. So be careful when you use the term. So in this case, we have we have the capital uh, N. Okay, where it's just a, uh, we don't find the, the, the what we call that, uh, the unit it's just a normal vector <clears throat> okay so where is your rx so your rx is on the plane so you have the flat plane just now so that is your tangent plane right so on the tangent plane you have the um the rx so this is rx the tangent vector along the x-axis and you have the ry Ry a tangent vector uh, uh, along the x. So let's say this is x, so this is y along the y axis. So when you have the cross product, because rx and ry they are a vector, right? So when they have a cross product, so we know that um, you can obtain the rx cross ry. So the rx cross ry is the vector perpendicular. To these two vectors rx and ry perpendicular so the vector perpendicular to these two vectors it is actually normal vector to the surface okay so now to get the normal vector to the surface um, uh, what you have to do is find the cross product so normal vector to the surface is the cross product rx and ry okay so uh, now you have to find the cross product between them. So Rx is 1, 0, del Z, del X. Ry is 0, 1, del Z, del Y. 
then you have to evaluate that. So, 1, 0. So, using the cross product between Rx and Ry, then this will give you the um, ZLX 0, uh, negative, right? Negative, negative, del Z, del Y. And this one, uh, okay, cheeky. Oh, sorry. Uh, it should be starting from the G cross K first, right? Okay, you want to obtain the I component, so G cross K. So you have negative del Z, del X. And then uh, G component, you have to uh, cross the K and the I. So 0 minus negative del z del y and then i cross j you will get only one so that is the normal factor where you obtain from uh, rx and ry okay and then because of your formula in the line integral here is a scalar form ds is a scalar form so um uh, then you have to um uh, convert that convert this is factor then you have to find the magnitude so the magnitude of n is now you have del z del x square plus del z del y square plus one so that is your um, n okay so that is the idea how can we obtain the formula of uh, uh, inside this one? Okay. Okay, so meaning that how can you obtain the square root of all these three terms here? It's actually from the idea of finding the magnitude of the normal vector. So, and actually, if you relate this with the gradient f that you have learned before this, you remember that how to get the, you are given a vector function f and you find the gradient. So, actually the same, this one is the same as the um, finding the gradient f where f is the function of x and y. Okay. Um, so, uh, but but in your calculation, you don't need to, you to provide all this calculation but the thing that you have to do is just applying this formula and plug it in compute that's it okay this one i just want to explain to you how maybe some of you might wonder how can we have this and is this one has to do with the outline that you have applied in uh, line integral so it looks like uh, you can see that the formula is looks the same but the way you uh, uh, i mean the way you obtaining this from the different uh information and uh, dif dif different type of information because now we deal with the surface okay okay so look at look at the example uh just using the the um numbering provided here so you are you have to evaluate the surface integral where the function is x y d s over the sigma and the sigma is uh, given by you have a plane mm, in 3d should be in 3d because the plane so 2x plus uh, y plus z equal to 2 that lies in the first octant okay so then we have to sketch the plane okay so now how can we get the plane um, so you have 2x plus y plus z equal to the 2. So it should be a tetrahedron then. Okay. So in this case, your um, your previous previous lesson is very uh, important. Okay. Last time you have learned how to sketch the surface. Now you want to apply them. Okay. So uh, then you need to uh, provide the traces. So we set for x equal to 0. So then we have y plus z equal to 2. And z is given by minus y plus 2. And then y equal to 0. Then we have 2x plus z equal to 2. And z is minus 2x plus 2. And z equal to 0. 
So 2x plus y equal to z equal to 2. So uh, y equal to minus 2x plus 2. So when we sketch them, so for the trees on ZY plane, negative. Remember, we need to sketch only on the first octant. So they are all on the uh, first quadrant. So uh, Y0, Z is 2. And when Z0, Y is 2. Okay, and the second one on ZX. When x0, z is 2, so also negative. <coughs> but when uh, z is 0, so x is 1. And the third one on y x plane. So when x0, y is 2. And when y is 0, uh, x is 1. Okay, so when we join them together, Definitely, we should have the tetrahedron. So, uh, this is z, x, and then y. Um, so, 2, 2. Uh, z, x, 2, 1. Okay. And x, y, 1, 2. So, this is our plane. Flat plane. Okay. So that is our surface, then we have to compute this surface integral for this particular plane. Okay, so the first thing is you have to have the ds in terms of da. Okay, so now you have to ask yourself, the first step is determine uh, what is the equation of the surface. Remember last time I mentioned that there are three types of uh, surface function. Where you have z is a function of x, y, or you have y is a function of x, z, or you have x is the function of uh, y, z. Okay, so in this case, uh, let's say you want to have z is the function of, because we always have that, right? But if some of you want to have y is a function of, uh, or x is a function, it's up to you. Okay, but then in this case, I'm choosing. So the first, the first step, I'm choosing. So the function that I have here is z is the function of. Uh, so meaning that I have to rearrange. So I have two minus two x minus y. Where in this case, I have z is the function of x and y. The most important thing you have to decide, because when you decided that, you know that. Uh, your region must be on x, y plane and your terms in DA after this should be only x and y, no more z. Okay? So then, uh, we have to find the, the uh, ds in terms of DA. So, ds in terms of DA, then you have to apply the, the gradient f, okay, where you have to differentiate z with respect to x square plus z respect to y square and z respect to z will give you 1 d d okay so as i mentioned before you don't need to uh, provide all this calculation that i showed you before this one just to to uh, I, I i just want to explain to you how we can get this particular formula okay but if you don't interested to know more in detail then you can skip that one but the thing is it is very important for you to know how to calculate this in terms of da ds in terms of d so that is a very important <clears throat> um okay so we differentiate z with respect to x so your function now is 2 minus 2 x minus y then we have to differentiate with respect to x then we have minus 2 square minus 2 square plus and z y is minus 1 square is 1 plus 1 Da. Okay, sometimes your, your result here can be just a constant, but sometimes it can be in, uh, an expression in terms of x, y. Okay, so not always the time you have a constant. So then uh, you have 
square root 6. Okay. So now we replace back your ds into the uh, your integration here. So now it's become uh, xy and then your your ds is now become square root 6 d. And once you use the da, automatically you will deal with the region and your region is lying on xy plane. So if you ask me, do I, do I need to put the xy all the time? So you don't need to put this actually just to always remind you that your region is lying on xy plane. So it will be more focused, right? Okay. Uh, so now... Um, now before we start to uh now you now we can see that you can see that now so because square root six is a constant I can take it out so now you have x y d a uh over the r so now it reduced to a standard double integral okay where your d a here can be uh the x d y or can be d y d x or it can be in a polar. If your region is part of a circle, then you can use a polar, but uh, it is a, not a circle, then you can just proceed in Cartesian coordinates. Okay. Um, but now, before you proceed to integrate, you have to make sure that the your integral now is only in terms of x, y. Okay. But let's say you still have, let's say your, your integral there is z. But meaning that you cannot proceed directly. You have to replace the z here. Uh, in terms of x, y. So, what is the function that you have to use here? So, to, to replace the z in terms of x, y, okay, let's say, I'm just uh, choose a random example. So, let's say that one is z, right? So, in order for you to um, replace the z in terms of x, y, then you have to use the, the uh, function uh, which is part of the surface. So, you just replace. So, now your um, your equation becomes you have x y and then substitute z so your z just now is um, um, 2 minus 2 x minus y and then dx so now your expression is only in terms of x y then you can proceed to integrate uh, for a standard calculation for double integral for over the region r okay if you have z but if if but if so now we go back to the original question where the original question there is no z right so we have only this one d so then you can just proceed without substituting the z because your expression here is no z is already in terms of only x and y so you can proceed so then you need to uh, de determine what is the audio integration then from there you can determine the limit okay so now uh, since your your function is in terms of x y then uh, your region should be on x y plane so from the traces here what what is the possible region that you have to have x y so this one is supposed to be part of your region so so this one is your region remember i always remind you to provide all the sketching because there is a mark Sometimes the mark can be two if it is complicated. The, the the total mark for sketching the region and sketching the solid can be two. But if but if the solid is can be easily imagined directly from your head, so we just give you the the uh the mark for the region. But I would say that uh, it is good for you to always bear in mind that the sketching of the solid or the region are very uh, important for me is compulsory okay especially for the region so now this is your region so your region is on y explained so basically it's coming from this equation so now uh, you have to decide the order so you want to have um the so I'll, i will use the uh, because now y is in terms of x so i will choose x is constant so for x is constant i have dy dx so limit of x from the uh, region here 0 to 1 and limit of y 0 to 0 to 2 minus 2 x 
so I plug in here so now 0 1 0 2 2 minus 2 x okay so then we can um, integrate uh, for a regular double integral that you have learned previously okay Okay, so when you integrate that, as usual, integrate with respect to y. So, we'll give you y squared over 2. And then, uh, substitute the limit. So, now your expression in terms of only x for single integral. And we expand this and multiply by x and you will get this. Okay, so I just, um, from this calculation, so I get this. And then, integrate with respect to x. And then, finally, uh, put the limit and you get square root 6 over 6. Okay, so here, the, the something new for you in surface integral is to find, uh, to obtain the calculation from ds into t, where if your function is in terms of xy, so you have to have z equal to, you have to rearrange, okay? But if it is already in the, uh, in the form that you want to, then you don't need to rearrange. Okay, so in this case you have an option so in this calculation i'm using z is a function of xy so that's why my formula should be zx squared zy squared plus one but if you choose y is the function of xz and your form the, your formula here should be different okay um, but find the final solution will be the same because when you have a different function when you declare a different function so your your limit uh, should be different because it depends on the region that you have so hopefully you understand this so this is only the only one uh, example so we can look at another example okay so here you have to take note that if your function or we call that as a density function um, is equal to one so the thing that you calculate here so this one so if this one is equal to 1, so this is actually you are computing the surface area of the of this plane. Okay, actually we can compute the surface area of this plane when we assume that the integrand here is equal to 1. So the answer will be, which means that in physical meaning of that, we are com uh, calculating the surface area of this tetrahedron plane. Okay. So we look at another example on the next video.